of normally drugs that are, you know, 10, 20 years old that have been very um, effective, uh, but frankly, for pharmaceutical companies, are not as profitable anymore, and so they don't produce as many or don't produce them at all. Yeah. So we're constantly having to search out and find uh, the appropriate medication for folks. And the other thing we see is just escalation of cost. Um, it's probably the single largest increase in cost we see every year is pharmaceuticals. So we've decided to come together with some other large health systems across the country to take on this issue directly. I love it. You know, I love I, it. Take charge. We, we deal with so many of these health systems who really do their best. And I, I truly believe um, – with everything that we cover, that the vast majority of medical professionals, especially on your side of things, which is the patient care side, are trying their best to do what they can for patients. And then things show up. I mean, just in 2018, and you probably are very familiar with this, we kept hearing stories about a saline shortage. And then the immediate thing goes, well, how do you have a saline shortage? The water, you know, we have salt water everywhere we go. How can we not do this? And then it turns out it's literally just the bags that it goes in because many of them came out of Puerto Rico and Puerto Rico had that Correct. had a devastating hurricane. Well, that's something that guess what? Anyone who's been in the medical situation, been given anything through an IV or you've probably been given saline as well. It's a key Absolutely. thing. Is this something I, maybe not this exact issue, but these kind of shortages, something you guys can help with. These are exactly the types of issues that we're going to take on directly. And, you know, once again, I think we've tried to work collaboratively over the last several years with the pharmaceutical companies really to no avail. And so we've decided to come together. Uh, you know, you've got some of the most storied health systems in the country, uh, Intermountain Health, Advocate Healthcare out of Chicago, um, HCA. I mean, we're, we're all coming together and we realize we have a common goal of taking great care of patients, but you've got to be able to have the right medications in order to do that. And these uh, these shortages have just gotten to a point where it's it's really really significant, and so we'll be focused on um, drugs that we think either uh, we we have trouble accessing them mm. or drugs that we think are are you know frankly relatively uh, in, in, inexpensive to manufacture, but for whatever reason pharmaceutical companies do not manufacture them. So we're really targeting initially 14 initial drugs. Um, We'll expand that over time, and Auctioner as a founding member will be involved in the direction of what areas um, the organization goes into and what drugs we go to manufacture. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, it's exciting, and I think it's really going to be groundbreaking for the industry, and also is putting pharmaceutical area you know on on notice that we can't have these these shortages, we can't have these escalating costs any longer. They have to be more collaborative and work with the hospitals of the country to address this issue together. Yeah. I want to ask, uh, with these drugs that you've identified, in, in what I'm reading in front of me, is 14 hospital-administered generic drugs. Is there maybe Correct. an expansion into consumer drugs, the drugs we go to the pharmacy to pick up, or is that not where the problem lies? I, I think it's really um, – it's going to be both eventually. Yeah, we we started small with 14. I think you'll see this expand relatively quickly, um, you know, over the next year or so. But yes, I think we're we're going to be focused on not just drugs that are administered in the hospital. We'll be looking at outpatient as well. Probably not things that are necessarily purchased over the counter, like Tylenol and things like that, uh, or generics for Tylenol. But really, drugs that once again, um, for for whatever reason. Pharmaceutical companies have indicated, like you mentioned, saline, which is a perfect example. Um, for whatever reason, it's difficult to get saline. They have not kind of stepped up to make sure they are producing this in the right way. So those would be the types of things we focus on. And and I I, I can tell you, you were, you were commenting on literally the heroic efforts that go on every week at organizations like, you know, here in New Orleans at Auctioner, our partners at Lafayette General Health over in Acadiana. We work every week to make sure we have the drugs that we can, that we need to take care of patients, and we get them. But it, it, it is so difficult; it's hard. We have to call around the country, and we, we just got to do something more direct to try to change this issue. And that's what I love—just you know, taking this bull by the horns and and getting it done. Because you're right; you know, here you are trying to help people and treat them. You shouldn't have to be tied up with all the red tape and on telephone lines trying to find the simple things that people need to be treated. 
not not when you see you know hospitals are are really trying to you know operate at maybe a uh, a profit margin of one to two percent, oh, and pharmaceutical yeah. companies have twenty to thirty percent margin. <laughs> oh, oh, twenty wow. to thirty percent margins, and so you know they they really have to do their fair share to step up here. The other thing that's just important, and I don't think you know people in America understand this, is that for Medicare, drugs are the only component of of service or goods that are purchased you know by Medicare that Medicare doesn't set the price. So if you get a, a heart surgery, if you get a joint surgery, the fee that the surgeon gets, the fee that the hospital gets, it's set by the government. The price for drugs is set by the pharmaceutical company. <laughs> they have no price controls at all. And this is just does not make sense, and it's got to change. And I've been a very vocal um, you know, advocate to change this. But, you know, once again, it, it, it's something that we're, we, we have, have really tried to work with folks, but now we have to take a different approach and get more aggressive. Yeah, wow. definitely. Oh, Warner Thomas, President and CEO of Oxner Health, thanks so much for your time, and, and kudos to you for, for you know, you and your organization for, for jumping in and doing this because, yes, we're talking about Oxner, Partner Hospital, Lafayette General Health here as well. It, and, and hopefully, you know what, we set a trend, and it's an avalanche of change where some of this kind of starts to come into check. I appreciate your time this morning. And I appreciate you uh, making, you know, letting people know about this issue because it's so important, and I think it's going to take, you know, all of us to kind of step up with a common voice to, in order to change this. So thank you for putting this in the forefront of the news. All right. Thanks thank so much. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Have a great one. Wow. You, you know, it's, it's not actually not even just bringing awareness to it and, and putting it in the forefront of news. It's standing on. 